Hello YouTubers, this is the Nubifier and welcome to something a little bit different. Yesterday I had the opportunity to sub in for Twerk17 on the Redacted Podcast, a weekly interactive Star Citizen news show live every Wednesday at 4pm Eastern Time on Twitch. This is not my usual content and I'm not planning on making this standard. I'm pushing it today to you on YouTube in case you missed it. I had such a great time on the podcast yesterday that I really hope you go and check it out. I am working on a couple things for you right now, so stay tuned, fly safe, and I'll see you in the verse. It is Wednesday, November 23rd, 2016. Uh, this is another episode of Redacted brought to you by Antlion Audio. Uh, they are having a sale on right now for the Mod Mic 4.0 for 15% off. Um, yeah, use your existing headset at a Mod Mic. What's going on, guys? Hey, how's hey. it going? What happened to Twerk's face? Oh, it's gone. It's totally different. Right? What happened to Twerk? Uh, so Twerk is away uh, doing some family stuff for the holidays in the Americas. Uh, we had our Thanksgiving like a month and a half ago or something in Canada. So He's, he's here in spirit, though. He's fucking here in spirit. <laughs> there he is. Such a hideous shirt. He's Look beautiful. at my trousers as well, though. Look at oh, these, wow. bad boy. <laughs> oh, wow. No it's pants. Christmas. Now, guys, if you want to uh, let us know about the audio stuff, I think last week I was a little bit louder than everybody else. Um, so if you just want to let me know in chat if there's any issues with the audio, that would be fantastic. Also, um, there will be no video accompanying this this week because my capture cards have decided to not work today. So, fun times. Uh, that being said... Board, what have you been up to this past week? Well, as I was just discussing with Nubifer, but you had us muted, I just bought an 890 jump and I've got some sort of like post 890 jump guilt. Um, <laughs> hey, you <laughs> so, hoping to talk your way out of it, through it or what? Well, as Nubify was saying as well, like I say on all my videos that lifetime insurance doesn't matter. And it doesn't unless it's insurance on my ships. <laughs> In which case, like, In which case it does. Like, Hypocrite Four confirmed. years, and that, that's what's that thirty-five thousand hours of gameplay or something stupid. Someone was saying, but you know, it just it sounds better with lifetime insurance, doesn't it? Yeah, I um, guess so. I mean, I can't say anything. All my ships are too. So, right. Oh no, that's making me feel worse. I had to melt my Polaris. Uh, you can always buy it back. But uh, so uh, more real, and we'll talk probably about um, post ship buying guilt uh, later. But other than getting these sweet clothes, yeah, um, I've been feeling a fuck ton better. Like, I'm sure people can tell by the way I'm like acting no, and moving. Um, I did almost break my leg before the stream. Uh, I fell over on the floor, had a crunch, and I was like, "My legs, my legs done. GG, good job." Uh, but it's just bad, disbrained or something. It's probably not even badly sprained. I'm just a pussy. Um, uh, this week has been mainly planning videos for 2.6. We've got knowledge of when 2.6 is coming out. So loads of stuff um, just going, I need to get this video done soon. And this video and this. But we haven't got the game yet. But I want to do tutorials and mm -hmm. all that sort of stuff. Um, and other than that, I've written lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of um, pieces about the uh, anniversary uh, one or two of which are on the redacted website at the moment the others will be going live throughout the week um let me just let me just post this here you know special plugs there you go okay thanks. there you go thanks Brian. Yep. um so yeah i've just been uh, doing some bits and pieces i was trying to get a pc guide up it's taken me fucking ages because i realized that i read it and was like this is only going to be a good guide for people that understand how to build Build PCs pretty well. Um, I need to right. make it nice and simple. You need so a nice that... beginner intro. Yeah, so it, it, it gets to people at all levels. It mm -hmm. goes, this is how to build a PC really simply. It's not, it's not going to teach you exactly how the basics are building, but it needs to be like, I now understand how to select stuff and why. I want that. I just want that down. So people go, I'm building a PC. This is why I'm selecting these components for my Star Citizen rig. This is why I'm waiting on these particular things. I just want to kind of get that into some sort of distilled format, which doesn't make your head bleed. Um, but uh, yeah, other than that, I've been pretty good and uh, haven't really done anything else. What about you, Noob? What have you been up to? Obviously, really, really interested about the uh, the live stream that we just had. Uh, 
finally more content to talk about. So I've been trying to pound out, you know, very short videos like I normally do, just like explaining uh, the flight model changes. I haven't flown myself the uh, the new models, but we got a chance to see like torque fly around. So that was good. Mm -hmm. uh, so I put a video up about that. Uh, the four variants, which I'd like to talk about later. And uh, then some kind of melting in CCU tactics, uh, trying to get some, it's not, you know, it's not gray market if you do it yourself, I guess, is what I'm saying. So <laughs> buying and melting and uh, basically stockpiling stuff for a rainy day in case you want to buy an 890 jump in the future, which you can't do. So, right now, sorry, so, so for, the, for the people who don't know who you are, Oh yeah. Um, right. <laughs> he just <laughs> right. started popping in and, and, hey guys. and, uh, no. whatever. Why don't you explain, uh, so, who you are, what you do. So I spend so much time in your, in your podcast that I just kind of feel like I belong here, I guess. Yeah. So hello everyone. I'm the new fire. I'm a redacted YouTuber. I'm one of the last redacted people that don't actually stream. I think Alessiana is the, <laughs> the only other person. Uh, I make no yeah. bullshit content. And uh, I focus a lot on HCS voice packs and that type of thing, plus trying to get information for you in as little time as possible that makes the most sense. So um, I've only been doing this for a year now. I'm coming up on my one year anniversary on 10 December, uh, which is which is fantastic. And uh, I really appreciate all the support. So obviously, if you guys want to if you guys aren't already subscribed, I would love it if you'd go check out my stuff and then go see if that's something that you'd like to do. Shameless plug. There you go. No, plug away, bro. So, plug away. Um, for me, I haven't really done a whole lot. I obviously we did the uh, anniversary stream here, and uh, you saw a lot of delayed reactions on my face. Uh, one with Twerk being there, and the second one being <laughs> the Caterpillar in two point six. Awesome. Um, other than that, uh, that's all we've really been doing. Um, obviously. Decided to go get my hair cut. I need to re-dye it. Uh, the Christmas t-shirt is almost ready. It's very close. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Help. Got a new TV in. I think that's it. I, I, other than my capture card's dying today. Uh, and that was just this morning. It was working fine yesterday. So um, hopefully I'm going to be able to get that fixed today. I'm hoping it's just a driver issue. And I can just go download the driver again and reinstall it. And it's going to be a thing of beauty. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but yeah, just Star Citizen. A little bit of Call of Duty here and there. Um, and just getting getting ready for 2.6 for when it comes out. Now, moving on to the news. Uh, first things first, we have Tony Z. Uh, has a subscriber town hall next week. I'll, Easy in the house. I'll post the link in chat for Sorry. that. There you go. There's a link for that. Um, that's November 29th from 10 a.m. Pacific. Uh, get your your Tony Z questions in because we're only going to get like two or three answered. Because <laughs> he'll write a novel for <laughs> each one, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, you will. Yeah, so that's cool. I didn't even know uh, that was happening until I saw the doc, actually. So... Um, that's happening. Uh, obviously, the anniversary live stream happened uh, last week on Friday. It was super awesome. Uh, awesome. What What did you guys think of of the event in general and sort of how how they put it together and and some of the things that they uh, showed us? Better than Citizen Con. Yeah, better than better than Citizen Con as far as uh, importance. Not to take away from Citizen Con. But right. I was, I was impressed by CitizenCon, like the planets and everything. But the uh, to see the javelin and the Iteris working uh, in engine, pretty, was just fantastic. Mind yeah, blown. Yeah, definitely seeing those those ships was yep. pretty awesome. Them showing yep. uh, a lot of things. Um, the guy floating over. The yeah. Outside. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. Cool. Like, uh, I think it was. I, I think the big takeaway for me was something we're going to talk about later, but is a schedule report. I think that was the most important thing that they released yep. hands down uh, over down. everything else. Yeah, so that was that was really cool. I really, really enjoyed it. Obviously, I thought it was 
Uh, and everybody else thought it was hilarious when I noticed Twerk after he was on the screen for like a minute. Um, and that they <laughs> brought that in guy? they brought in Twerk Seventeen and DJ Knight uh, to do some live streaming from the event and doing the whole Aegis versus Anvil thing and and highlighting those new variant ships and everything. We've they should do that. One hundred and thirty-four quadrillion billion zillion dollars. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Eight, eight ninety now. jump. Yeah. Um, that's just because of the eight ninety jumps, we've just hit one hundred and thirty-four million dollars. Yeah. And how many are left? It doesn't matter. Right. I know. Doesn't matter. But the jump. The doesn't jump matter. I have origin, one. Listen, the origin guy, jump geez. sale is on. If people didn't already know. So Board gamers already days, bought one. Yeah. So the origin sale started today. Um. So far, they've done they've done a bunch of different things. Uh. I'm gonna jump into that a little bit later. I think we have that on the dock. Oh, well, I can I can talk about it now. Um. Let me put the. This is the misc link. If you want to put the the origin link in chat, that would be awesome. Uh, cause I don't have that in the doc. I have the wow. Still Still that me. I got it. Um, but we have all the different manufacturers for each day of the week, uh, up until Saturday, and then, um, on Sunday, or, or I think Saturday and Sunday, everything's gonna be for sale, and then Sunday, from my understanding. The capital ships will be able to be purchased with store credit. Yeah, one last one last kick at the cap, and it, it's going to be nice too at the end because we're going to be able to have all of the variants in one shot too. Uh, so you'll be able to pick and choose the one that makes the most sense to you. Screw your variants. Mm, I know. Uh, it is what it is. And then we um we have uh, I guess we can we can talk about the variants. We can talk about the the Hornet Wildfire, the Saber Comet, Gladius Valiant, and the Avenger Renegade. No, it's whole name. You got to make it the whole mouthful. Avenger Titan. Yeah. Is it is Avenger Titan Renegade? Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Titan. So Aegis, Aegis Avenger Titan Renegade. Hornet F Seven C Wildfire Gladius. I hate you, <laughs> Valiant. <laughs> Why would why would I want you, Valiant? Yeah, Saber, go die in a fire. Comment. Oh, because they amazing. can because they can see you from across the map. Saber, I'm not as good as the well, other PvP build. They, Comment. They showed the the big thing with that was when they first showed it. Everybody thought it was just the skins uh, yeah. at first, right? And and they were showing their skin tech, and that's something that they had said before, but they really reiterated on that this time. On how they want to put that in the hands of us, being able to put in hex codes in some sort yep. of paint shop in the game to be able to swap those colors and everything like that. Now, my question to you guys is: the one ship I can think of, and this is only because I own a bunch of them, is the Hornet or the or sorry the the Drake Dragonfly Yellow Jacket. Does that lose <laughs> any of its limited? <laughs> you could make a black and yellow. 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 Like, yeah, you can just yeah. paint them yellow. It'll still have racing stripes or something fancy. Don't worry. A wing on the back. Right? Like, do you think that they'll add something to that to make them... Like, I don't care. God, mine are exactly. all... Go I'm changing mine so, all the black anyways. Hook, hook line and yeah, ticker. Yeah, so some, but, some colors curious. might be blocked out. That it might be shiny. You can only get matte yellow. Right. Um, Flesh-colored Drake Dragonfly. Oh, my God. You know, I like that. I like that. Wow. Call it the flashlight. Yeah. And then <laughs> the game, you know, gets its PG-18 rating. I, I do think that some stuff like that is probably considered as an afterthought. Yeah. <laughs> like, kind of like, well, we're going to have the paint system. What about this guy that's, that's limited edition limited. yellow? Like I, could, yeah. I, could, I could see them swapping the size 1 weapons to a different type of weapon and, and call it like oh. a different type of variant maybe. You yeah. know, and maybe give it a fancier skin, maybe a black and yellow, like like kind of like a yellow something, jacket something or a hornet. Special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I can see that too. But I mean, it, it was really cool. It was cool to see how they they implemented it with the different patterns and and everything else as well. Like the uh, yeah. the one with the the multi cam on it, right? Like the gray gray and white yeah. urban multi cam, and then they were able to put like. Uh, the tints over top of it to change the different colors of that and everything. And I metallic, really, really liked the it. The metallic uh, finish as well on some things. Yeah, they had the metallic. So I, they had a rusted one. 
They had a, a matte and a gloss. I think just having the word yellow jacket on that dragonfly might be enough to make it, even if people had the same thing, without that. I don't think it matters. Yeah. I really don't. I, I don't think it, it matters. Matter. I don't, it doesn't, Limited. The, the concept didn't have it. Now, that being said, that was just the concept, and that could have changed. Like, I, like they, could, they could do something cool with it, and maybe they'll put flames on the front or something ridiculous. But... <laughs> Sidecar. Oh, yeah, so, uh, oh god. Yeah, they're not going to do that. First. They're not going to do that. But um put your pet in it. You can put your dog in your sidecar. Space dog. Yeah. <laughs> oh fuck yeah. It fights as well. If I can fire the gun, your space dog can fire a gun from okay, the sidecar. I'm going to see. Confirm. I'm going to see if I can get this to work. It's probably not going to work. Um but let's see if and, I can So this is the only other like the paint system. Oh, great. it's working. What? I don't, I don't even, I don't even know. But anyways, so I have the variance video up right now. Nice. Um, I'm just going to leave it and let it play through. Yeah. But the Avengers on the screen right now with the blue and yellow advocacy police uh, theme and the yellow, cool. the yellow cockpit. What did you guys think about that? That ship? To me, yes. that's the best. That's the one that makes the most sense. Like the physical appearance of the ship is beautiful, but uh, the loadout itself... If I had a Titan, I would actually buy that. Yeah. That would be a very would viable, that. especially for Arena Commander. Being uh, the main cannon and the two two weapons are uh, in perfect velocity, and they're all gimbaled. So it makes a... Uh, no, I, that... I have an issue with these that won't let me buy them, and it's because they're, they're the standard hulls. They're more expensive than the standard hulls. And with weapon balance constantly changing, they're going to go in and out, mainly right. out right. of being usable what well, i say usable competitive as their loadout and that's what you want them for you right want them yeah there. but, yeah there's yeah, no you... there's no there's no difference in the shields there's no different in the armor yeah. there's no difference in anything else for them there's not yeah. like an extra gun on it or something like that i remember when we were first watching it we thought somebody had said that they saw maybe a yeah. top turret the top. on the gladius and we were like oh you know that that is definitely worth the extra 20 bucks or or whatever that they're going for the only there's, reason that you'd want to buy it now is LTI, and that is actually it. If you don't have one, and you don't feel like going through the the hoops of buying a, a token an and then upgrading and it, upgrading it, yeah. yeah. Then you, if all you want is a legitimate like vanilla LTI ship, then there you go. And it could also be used in the future for if you don't like it, you could always upgrade it and keep your LTI. So it's really it's kind of lucrative that way because you could, like you say, the ship goes out of season. Then you mm -hmm. could use it for something else. But in the meantime, it's a f it will be they've confirmed a 2.6 flyable, or at least you'll get a, a loner for uh, Titan. But um, right, I don't know. It's it's it it's not so bad. I I know what you mean. It's like paying twenty dollars for the same thing with a fresh coat of paint. But uh, the argument of the weapon system being in and out of season, as it were, as they balance, is no different than the one that comes stock on the uh, normal Titan because that's. What's on there is going to go in and out as well. I mean, yeah, yeah that, that's true. That's true. And if you wanted all the weapons that the loadouts come with, then it's actually a cheap way to buy those weapons. No, yeah, I've, I have, I have the, the hex codes changing right now, and I've slowed down the video to 0. 0.25. Um, there's a lot of variants there. Like, there's, like, creamsicle colors and all kinds of stuff. Like, it looks like they... It's not just block color either. There's some textured ones, and yeah. they can see there's lots of different... Um, areas of the ship that can be colored, like secondary areas and tertiary. Areas. Yeah, there's a, there's a, a yeah a primary, secondary, and tertiary areas. Yeah. Now the the what is cool to me, obviously my favorite one out of all of this was the uh, was the red and black. And I, I'm going to show you because I don't think they really showed the like the damage slash rusted out uh, one on any other color but the red and black one. Um, so I'm going to pause it right here and I pause it on there and you can see like the wear along all of the, the, the edges of the ship and everything like that. And I was really surprised that this was the only one that had that, but it does have, uh, it did bring that into me th that it was like, you know, you're going to have that rust. You're going to have that sort of, uh, used and, and well, they, whatever. They showed us that well. though on the planetary tech landing, uh, mm -hmm. at citizen con, some of the bikes were rusted to shit. And uh, so, I mean, and they looked really good. Like when you slowed yeah. down on that, it was very convincing. So it makes sense that it would just pour it over. I get the feeling that that specific skin that you stopped on 
the, the red and black one that looks rusted, has a specific use in the verse already for them. That they, yeah. They've gone, we need this saber to be a pirate saber, but possibly a pirate swarm saber or something mm-hmm. like that. Because like, right. <laughs> that one is, was really detailed. And the black and gold one, I mean, I've already, all the testies are going crazy over that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, getting all of those in is is uh, really exciting, and it's going to be really cool to see all of this stuff when it uh, finally does come in, uh, when we do get our hands on it. And I'm hoping that we don't only get that for the ships, but we get that for our armor sets um, and some of the yeah. clothing and stuff like that as well, right? Because it is just that hex code. that It doesn't change the actual texture or anything like that. Oh, I actually saw that in a demo. In the same way. Like, I'd love to have a board gamer patch. I'd love to have yeah. Like walk back. yeah. Oh, that's the other thing too. Is I know there's another CryEngine game that allows you to bring in one image, and you can that image can go on shirts, it can go on jackets, it can go. It went on the sails of ships, and that game is Archage. And Archage was also another CryEngine game. Uh, and what you did was you renamed your your PNG file to some special file and put it in a folder, and then you could uh, apply that to your equipment or your ships or whatever it is that you wanted. Ah. Uh, and that would be really, really cool to see it to come in, to have, like, yeah, as as either your board logo or the noob skull or the, the Saurus logo the or noob skull. the, the <laughs> or org, like, or the org logos, right? Especially yeah. for, like, those big orgs, having, having those org logos in there and having yeah. the ability for everybody to use those. For sure. Would and again, really that's awesome. the kind of customization that makes the game a lot more fun because it doesn't change the gameplay, but it, it does kind of make it uh, more personal and more fun. Like seeing a Hull E fly across the sky with like your org logo on all of the banners and then, you know, all branded the same color and then all the escorts are the same co- color. Will that make you less of a target or a harder to hit target? No, but psychologically, you're going to go, you're going to look at that. You go, hmm, that Hull E is really pretty, but look at all that red you know, or or blue or whatever, and you'll know they're all part of the same org. It'll be it'll be very cool. Yeah. Now we talked a little bit about this earlier, uh, and that is the big ships or the big guns of the UEE. So in this video, we saw the Idris, mm. we saw the Javelin, and we saw the Bengal. Uh, all super awesome ships. Obviously, you can't get the Bengal. That's the only. That's one of the only capital ships well. that you cannot buy. Yeah, you can't buy it yeah. right now. Yeah, you if you are so inclined, you may be able to uh, acquire one in the verse. Um, but what did you think of the Idris, what they shown and the Javelin? The Javelin looked awesome. Yeah, so the, um, the rears of the ships looked pretty impressive, like the, the amount of engines and like the it's just quite intimidating seeing that. Um, the javelin, the, especially, it just looks fucking huge. Look well, they did a fly. They did a fly through the javelin, didn't they? Or was that the Bengal? I forget. It wasn't. But there was one uh, where a ship flew right through the. I think the, that was the, the Bengal. Bay. I think that's the Bengal. Okay, that, that makes, makes sense. Fly through. Yeah, the thing that I the thing that struck me was the amount of detail that was on such a large ship because you would think like, oh yeah, uh, something like an M50, it makes sense. You look in the moat in the engine, like the bolts there. Mm-hmm. But it seems that they've done almost the same level on something that's massive you know so it's very very nice to see to get um that the level of quality hasn't gone down just because it's a gigantic asset or they're trying to rush to get it out and not only that is their usage of space on the inside of these they showed that sort of uh x-ray vision on it uh their their use of space on on the inside and and lack of negative space is really really awesome obviously the 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 interest got a lot wider uh, so they made it a lot longer than it was, and obviously it ballooned up to the size that it is now. Um, yeah. But it is it is an impressive looking ship, and will be really exciting to see when they're actually flying around in game. Just where the where the bridge is, you know, I can imagine. Like I thought about standing there and watching uh, ships take off and watching the whole thing because you're raised, obviously, mm-hmm. and um, it's it's just going to be epic. Especially watching the the torpedoes come out or the missiles, and it's just I, I hope that it's everything that we remembered from watching Battlestar Galactica, you know, that big battle where, th- right, where it's they're just all coming out and nuts. Yeah. Yeah. I want, I want to see that. I would like the game to be able to do that because it's going to be mind blowing. Now, uh, one other thing that was really noticeable with these capital sized ships 
was they were, and they even mentioned it, they are very angular. There's a lot of flat surfaces to reduce down on the amount of polygons that they're going to need, especially with those further LODs, right, mm -hmm. to make it run in-engine. Now, mm -hmm. I think that's what their biggest thing is going to be with these large ships, is getting them in. Because w when you realize that these are the size of actual FPS levels that are flying around yeah. in game I'm, and you'll be able to have I'm flying a ship which them. takes two servers to run. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Um so I mean I think that's going to be uh or or is or was a, a technical challenge for CIG. Um we haven't seen these this size of a ship come in. We've seen the Starfarer and they're, you know, with our net code that we have now it chugs uh, a bit. And, yeah, and, and that's actually whatever. pretty angular too. Like a MISC ship has a rounded front and everything, but it's still quite deceiving. There are a lot of very, very yeah. flat There's surfaces There's a lot of flat surfaces, it. yeah. But uh, so, what I was going to say about this though, sorry, is um, even, though it's, even though it's so big and it has all these uh, angles and everything, the level of detail uh, scaling and the field of view scaling, that once I get that nailed down, uh, it... It will see. It should seamlessly be able to let you see and say yes, that's an Idris or that's a javelin from a distance, and then uh, very very basic markings, and then it uh, smoothly come in to detail. So if they can nail that down, that should offload. Basically, if they can optimize, it is the easiest way of what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. But uh, it so should run. We will we will see capital ships in the persistent universe as soon as two can be supported with fighters fighting each other. Without it going to shit. Yeah. Right. That's basically what they that said. Was, by the way, uh, what they just showed on the scene was my favorite scene of the entire thing was when they had the Bengal and then the Idris's warp in beside mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And, man, it was yeah. so cool. Right out of a movie. Like, <laughs> directly. Yeah. Uh, like, the machinima with this is, is going to be amazing. Um, I'm... I'm really looking forward to it. Now, there's something in uh, that's not in the dock that I just thought of because of that is the new cameras we saw with 2.6. Now, I don't have a video off of hand, but instead of just jump cutting from uh, camera angle to camera angle, it would actually like pan around to mm -hmm. the to so like the transitions. Excuse me, would be a lot smoother. And that new missile cam. Now we have a missile cam already. But the yep. new missile cam is, instead of being at the nose of the missile, yep. it's now up and behind it. And yep. I think it might be possible to save lots of different presets for those camera angles, even possibly for the missiles, maybe, mm -hmm. um, and just have them pre-saved as your like selection of camera angles. That's what it sounded like when they were talking about right. it. And for content creators and for or if, well. or if you could like edit them. Just like you know how you can go into free cam with by pressing Z and then moving your mouse around, and then yeah. if you hit Z, but as soon as you switch out of that camera angle, it resets it to what it basically was. But if it stayed with where you set it to, that would give you those those four or five camera angles that you have, or or however many they add. Yeah, hot, but hot with, key. well, no, it, it would still you could still do it with the F four, okay, and cycle through it, but. It would just save where the camera was was at last. Do you oh, know what I'm saying? I'm gonna what be interested to see how they do it. It's gonna be. Um... There was uh, one of the Modern Warfare games I think had the ability to record the whole, like it would record the game to the point where you could move the camera after and play back and rewind and everything. I know this is like major wish list stuff, mm -hmm. but that would be if if CIG wants this level of machinima that is like next level. Uh, like do it, <laughs> yeah. then being able to record your clip, you know, like a little here, this five, five minute window, and then you can zoom way out and zoom in on your fleet coming in. And I don't know. Right. Yeah. Which, I mean, the, that's something that Sean Tracy's talked about wanting to do before. Um, yeah. And we'll have to see. Now, t -Pal says it already does that. It does if you don't switch the camera. So right. you can you can hold like you can tap Z, move your camera, tap Z again, and then you have control of your ship. But as soon as you change your camera, it resets that position and it doesn't keep it. So it would be cool if it just kept that position and still did the pan transitions or however the transitions are that you want. And ha and for example, for me to redo our organization video, 
with the new cutlasses, bringing in some caterpillars, some some buccaneers and stuff like that. I'm really, really looking forward to those new systems. Well, and the one that, that we don't actually have now is the field of view. So just like a DSLR, you can focus in on near or far, you know, and get right. the nice bokeh, the the, yeah. the haze, the, uh, you know, the motion blur, the, the stuff that you want to get rid of all the time. Right. That, uh, being able to modify that too, is going to add a level of cinematics, which we don't have which you can only yeah, do mean, in Adobe. And, and it's quite possible that we'll get more and more and more features to those cameras as the as the patches roll on. They might add loads of cool effects. Sepia. No, going back, <laughs> it's, it's, we, we sort of went off track there a little bit with the camera thing because it wasn't in here and I wanted to talk about it. But going back mm -hmm. to the big capital ships, right now, uh, are there any addresses left? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's 400-ish left. Okay. Uh, they've try. been resetting them every day, right? The 500? No, no. They, they four or add, five right now. They added um, them in lots of two hundred, and a few of them oh. stacked up. Oh, okay. That's they've been they've been adding them in lots of two hundred, and they've been selling about two hundred a day then, because yeah. it's it's sort of been coming through like that. Now those are coming in, and and the javelin is sold out, right? Gone. It's gone. Yeah. Right now it's red. Now uh, those were in, and some of the other ships that we're seeing are the war bond sales. Mm -hmm. Which means that you cannot use credit to purchase these ships, and they are a little bit cheaper than they normally would would have been. So, yep. for example, the Comet uh, is in, re or or it's not the Comet now, is it the Avenger that's in today? Mm -hmm. So it's the Avenger now. is. I'm, I haven't seen the price, but I'm going to assume it's sixty dollars on War Bond and seventy dollars on the normal, because that it's that's been the pricing. Dollars, eh? That's been the price. One or the other. Yeah, there's a dysfunction, a, a slight. Yeah, there's about a ten dollar difference in between. Yeah, the so it's seventy five uh, LTI standalone and, and sixty five. Yeah, yeah, for 65. a war bond. Okay. So, so you're looking at sixty five dollars uh, in cash or seventy five dollars with uh, credit or a mixture of cash and credit. Um, now, how do you guys feel about them doing these war bond uh, sale? things where where if you're using new cash um you get that discount as opposed to using that using credit I, thrift my internal thrift bot demands that they allow me to use store credit but <laughs> i don't if, if people don't like them don't purchase them with money um i mean it's the either cig would either do it or they'll not do it i don't think that they might try doing sales with store credit that have discounts as well in the future. It's all marketing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I'm very juxtaposed about the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm kind of in a weird spot too because I, I see both sides of it and, and I get both sides. I get where, you know, I've put however much money in. That money is still money that I put in and I should be able to allocate that however I see fit. Well, uh, but... should we? No, I have a, I have a point well, on that actually. So me, myself, I've put in X numbers of dollars mm -hmm. and the game's not finished yet. And the game is not going to get finished just on the amount of money that I put into it. So I know that everyone across the board is kind of salty because, for example, you bought a Super Hornet package when it was on concept years ago and it was, it was price X and it was supposed to be price X going up. And then it wasn't supposed to be LTI. And now it seems like anyone that bought an LTI Titan on mm -hmm. concept isn't getting their it's like a broken promise. That's one way of looking at it. My way of looking at it is this is another opportunity for a new member to join us and, you know, become one of us, get the LTI ship of their dreams, just like we were able to years ago. Mm -hmm. More importantly, it's going to sound ro rooters maybe, but take that, take their money and put it into the machine and keep the machine going because the game isn't going to get worse with more money. <laughs> it's, right. it's certainly not going to get worse. And it's not going into some guy's yacht somewhere or something. It's going into game development. That's what I that's what I believe to be true. Right. So why are we complaining? Why are we fighting each other over the fact that the ship is a little bit cheaper? And so I have still... a counter argument to this. OK, yeah. Why wouldn't they? Uh, then my counter argument is why wouldn't you just have it priced at that cheaper and mm -hmm. just allow credit to be used as well? Because, because it's an incentive. Be, but it's you, an incentive. The, the, but the thing is, is the, the, you, 
but it would solve both problems because then anybody who's new that hasn't had the opportunity to get one of those LTI ships could then with new money. And the people that uh, maybe wanted to to melt something else or whatever and get one of those uh, without having to spend more money could do so as mm-hmm. well. I, I, I know what you're saying and I agree with you that that's one way of perceiving it. Mm-hmm. But if you're taking the if you take the seventy five dollar price as being a good value for the chip, and obviously that's a whole other discussion, right? That's another one. Right. Then you can't, especially with okay, even even uh, I let's say I understand the war bond sales on the Idris and the Javelin. Yeah, that's okay. a no brainer. But yeah. when we're looking at brand new ships that are coming into the game, Saber Comet, Hornet Wildfire, Gladius uh, Valiant, uh, the Avenger Renegade. Right, those are mm-hmm. brand new ships that nobody's had the the opportunity to purchase prior. Right, I argue that one too. Right, and and the thing is, is I, it, we could are and that's the thing though is we yeah. can both argue from both sides forever, um, yeah. because so, it does make sense on both sides, and I do get it. So it was my feeling that CIG don't want people to repeatedly melt and unmelt things. That's like that's what I'm getting out of this. Yeah, that they don't desperately want people to do that. And they never have. They want people mm-hmm. to buy something and stick with their pledge. They've given people too much sort of like well, people then worry. They worry about their, their their choices and then they keep on melting and unmelting stuff. I do that as right. I uh, with I suffer from anxiety from a lack of control. When sales <laughs> come around, I panic to fuck. Like, because I'm just, I have to make the most out of my money. the guy who so, just bought an 890 jump. <laughs> 890 I, jump. Want, I desperately need, but that's one of the things. It was so much more expensive, yeah. um, and I couldn't, I couldn't get it in the way I wanted. It's only got four years insurance and not lifetime insurance. I don't have the control I want. Mm. If I couldn't melt and unmelt stuff repeatedly, I wouldn't have that worry at all. <laughs> yeah, right. So be, you'd be committed. Myself. You'd yeah, be I'd be committed, pledged, and I'd be, and that's it. Yeah. But that's and I wouldn't not have fun. made some of the choices early on. I, I shouldn't have. I, when I bought my ships originally, I wanted those ships full stop. Now, obviously, some of those ships have changed, uh, right. and they will continue to change. Even when the games were released, probably, they'll get, mm-hmm. weapons will get rebounded, ships will get rebounded still. Stuff will change. Now, I love the fact that CIG let us change our ships, but we shouldn't get annoyed about the there fact that There will be a certain point where we're not going to be allowed to do that anymore. Right. Like there and will, yes, there will be a cost. Now that that's yeah. that's still a ways out, I think. But uh, that is that is on the uh, on on the distant horizon. That is going to happen. Like once the game is out, you're not just going to be able to melt and unmelt. You'll have to go into the game and sell it, and then go and purchase something else or or whatever if that's what you want to do. It's a now, nice distraction though, too, right? Like the selling, getting the fleet you want is kind of like scheming and playing mm. so in itself right now it's, it's a fun it's it's a little meta to do. it's a little meta thing going right. on with the you get to talk and, with your friends and, and say what did you get and why did you get that and it's it is it is a type of gameplay until we get actual gameplay i guess yeah. right <laughs> for the fleet game yeah <laughs> Um, now I'm going to talk about uh, the ships of 2.6, and of course I got to start with uh, my baby, the caterpillar. Now it's changed quite a bit. Uh, it had it has a beautiful new skin, um, and it's Long. changed since it's changed since the last update. And what are, what are your guys' thoughts on the color scheme of this? Well, this gets back to the branding, right? Yeah, like the Kovlex. That- the Kovlex nice. skin amazing. on it. That looked amazing. I didn't it, think I'd be so into something that was. I didn't like an think I would shit. be. I, I didn't think I would be so into the Kovlex skin. I'm like, I want yeah, it. That's, but that's what it would look like in real life because just like an 18 wheeler driving down the street, yep. it's a gigantic billboard. Yeah. So it's natural. You know, it's like, a good way to you, look at you this. Actually, get... is like a, a a truck similar to like a transport truck. Yeah. yeah. I, I never thought about that. 18 wheelers very differently now. Like they want to steal all my uh, shit. Yeah, they it's want to. St- it's a. It's an eighteen wheeler from Fast and Furious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's yeah. Me. Now, uh, I really, really like the front doors. How they they pop out, open, and then the lift yeah. drops down, and and it looks like the lift drops down on the one side as well. Excuse me, on the uh, side of the modules for the cargo modules. Now, all of the ships that, or all of the caterpillars that are out now that people can own only have the cargo modules. Right. They will be releasing uh, different modules later on. 
Um, as the game is is uh, more fleshed out and everything, and infinitely, is... like even after launch, yeah. there's nothing stopping them from saying, you know, something in lore like, you know, to meet this new demand, we now have a liquid container, or we have a a vehicle specific mover, you know, and you lose the ramp in the top, but now you can put a folded up something in it. So it's, I think it's going to be the Swiss Army knife of the verse. And uh, anyone who asks in my org, they're, I'm like. Buy it. It's going to be. Yeah. It's going to be everything you want because we don't even know what's coming, right? You could actually go in if everyone says I need it to hold liquid. Boom. There's nothing stopping them from making. See, I a... think that that was very much sort of like was going to be the role for the whole C, um, mm -hmm. but I do think the caterpillar has kind of almost overtaken that role as a Swiss Army knife of of haulage. As yeah. well as doing lots of other stuff. Oh, because cool. it's going to be able to have so much flexibility, right? And that's what these these Drake ships are are known for. Now, one of the other things too is how different and how much more awesome the ship looks with this lighting. Like we've seen the models, we've seen the the, the yeah, white Teller. box and Teller the gray does box a great and everything job, for sure. Well, even yeah. just what they're doing with CIG with the actual uh, legitimate lighting and and all of mm -hmm. that other stuff. Yeah, like. Like, for example, Teller brings a model in and does a cool job of lighting them up and stuff. Yeah. But it does, like, it's when it, the Something. final model is in and it's lit up like it was here, it, it looks so good. It's cinematic. It definitely makes people want to buy it more. <laughs> it just looks, you're right, it, it does look fantastic. And the fact that you can see now all the landing gear, how it would physically work, that each module has its own pair of legs that come out. And like you said, the 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 door, the way the front door opens and the ramp comes down. It's just, I mean, natural gray box, white box finished, right? Right. When we saw it before, it was fantastic. And I got very excited because we're talking about uh, salvage module, barracks, you know, uh, boarding. And I mean, we lost the personnel torpedo shooter, but whatever. Let's, let's not worry too much about that. And then the next time it came out, I think it was Disco and you, you could see how the turret and everything worked. But now... It's all there. All the plumbing is in. The floorboards are there. The light, the wear, everything is there. There's also that haze within, just like mm -hmm. they did for the Retaliator. It's just next level. And it, it's fantastic because I remember it, white box and gray box, and now it's it's finished. It's here. It's very, very cool. Man, it's such a good, it's such a good looking ship. <laughs> I'm so that was a very excited. Strange sound you made there. I'm, yeah, I'm bit... really, really oh. excited for this so, ship. Well, I, I'm very excited to see its modules. Like, so fucking excited. Mm -hmm. And so, do we? The, the, there's the four segments for its modules. Yep. Is its front? Well, four also plus going to one. Be Bespoke. Four plus the front. Yeah, that's right. And the front, so think... the front. I don't think you the can front, change. Well, the front will yet. have its own different modules but it it I'm, yeah I'm it, like it accent, will it will swap out as well i believe two different ones think, yeah, I, now i'm really I curious think, to i, I still want to know what those uh prongs on the front are because i yeah, always I'll, thought it would be cool to ram, ram into a ship and then have yeah. the front open to load on to something but i don't know i don't i and they're, they they don't just look, look like cool. they're not weapons no they just i'm not cool. quite sure uh what they are like, but, but they, Maybe Mud they're flaps. to maybe they're to um, give the ship a little bit of extra room when approaching stations. Mm -hmm. So like they, they, they they're to tell Ooh, a, you a where the, the ramp where the ramp. Or do you think they could they could uh, hold tractor beams? They could hold tractor beams, but I'm thinking more so that the ramp can um, always be lowered effectively. Do there. you guys think? Because I just saw it. The ramp went level. Yeah. Do you think that it's going to go? down like a yeah yeah no no i extent? think no i think it's gonna go level and then it's going to um drop at, drop down? down so just like the front does like when you okay. watch it on the front where it goes level oh, and then sort of that's cheeky chisels down or, or like um so swivels I, down i think that's what it's gonna do i think with all the ramps and the landing gear and stuff the intention is to make them so they merge to terrain as well mm -hmm. so if you land on a mountain yeah, Whatever, the ship will stay straight. Yeah, the the, the, the yeah. legs will be like uh, like you, when you see those four wheeler jeeps with the crazy suspension mm -hmm. and the wheels are all over the place. Yeah, that that does uh, make a lot of sense. Cheeky. Um, now the next ship, the eighty five X. Now this is the first ship of the Origin uh, line that 
really defines what Origin is going to look like. The only other ship I can think that's even close to this is the M50. Now, the... the but, yeah. This is going to replace all the materials. The all the materials well, and, and stuff. Yeah, so the, we know the 300 series is getting a rework. They haven't worked on the 890 jump yet. Um, and, you know, there's the rumors of the 600 series. The, the design and everything that they had for this was fantastic. Um, it really did feel like, you know how they talk about that BMW or Mercedes, like very yeah. elegant, sporty feel. Yeah. It's not a Corolla, that's for sure. It it's definitely not. felt like that. <laughs> and, and the lines were a lot better, you know, and it, it was like, you know, you first really saw this, this kind of style with the Kruger ships yeah the right with, with the p52 and the p72 the headlights yeah the front and everything all tucked in very 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 luxury and very uh very very cool so yes i agree with you 100 percent. i'm interested to see if they carry the m50 interior into the 85x or if they kind of just rework it because i think the 85x was before the m50 as far as lore is concerned and it was a racer it was intended to be and then they right. went m50 but Let's talk well, about the, the 85X that they're they're using was initially an M50 concept, right? So uh, four size ones, two gimbaled is what I got off of the uh, the page, and I know shit can change, but if you could take the turret off and flash fire a size two, let's say, on that, that it's not necessarily going to be your warship, but it's I think more of a pest than than a Kruger. In my opinion, the the gun, the ballistic is good and everything, but it will eventually run out of ammo and overheat. Whereas 85X might turn out to be um, a better snub, even though it doesn't dock with the right. Um, well, the Connie. 85X, there's a couple things we know about it. Um, the first thing is that it will be able to quantum. It won't yeah. be able to jump. It, has, it, it has also a has drive. two right seats. From ben Lesnick. Two seats instead of just one. So this is this is your little speedboat that goes in the and, and it comes with the, the A ninety jump comes with one, and it's your oh, little yeah. speedboat that goes in your yacht. I guess is the best way of putting it, right? So uh, I, I think this is going to be a ship that for a lot of people will go with them for the entire life of the game. They're going to mm -hmm. be able to use it for so many different things, and it's not like an Aurora that you sell. Mm -hmm. When you go like, well, I've upgraded now, I'm going to a different ship, I'm going to a different ship. This is going to be a personal shuttle. This is really fucking small that you can put on up, put in a lot of other ships. It's got four size one weapons. It's got a quantum drive. It shouldn't really be classified as a snub fighter because of those two seats and the quantum drive, in my yeah. opinion. It's a toy. But it is. It's, it's so it's, small. Yeah, it's the car. It's the Z, It's the BMW Z4 that you take out on the weekend. Yeah. You know, it's your it's your fun car. It's yeah, exactly. Perfect. You're your weekend driver, your Sunday driver. Um, yeah. Now, with now that we've seen sort of more of the style guide for where they want to go with Origin, and they're sort of mm -hmm. locked. This seems to be the last ship that they have that is getting locked in in this style, right? So, so Drake, they figured that out when they were doing the Herald and doing all that, and we're seeing the rework mm -hmm. of the Cutlass, which is so desperately needed. Um, you saw that with RSI. They, they, I think that was, or MISC also was one of the first ones yeah. where they the did bubble. and they do all the design, uh, yeah. all, all of those design docs and everything. And I think Origin is the last of the human uh, ships that we're going to see that are... The canopy is just like, yeah. I think uh, everything's for Origin, like a lot smooth it's, it's, and those, those right. uh, sloping and, or, 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 and sweeping lines on the ship. I guess yeah, is the best way to put track it. IR or VR in an origin ship, you're going to be able to see pretty much everything. Unlike RSI, that's got the bars, and you know Aegis has the bars like this. Right. Uh, Origins thing so far of all of the ships, even the 300 series to a point, is very very unobstructed uh, cockpits. So. Yeah, really, really looking forward to seeing the reworks for the 300, 315, 325A. Um, and and those other ships uh the next one is the herald and another one of my so many drake ships coming in 2.6 i'm so <laughs> excited um but it looks like a mobile studio inside and it's amazing yeah. Uh, and it's a Drake ship. You can tell it's a Drake ship just from looking at the back, the motor and everything. And just like you said, yeah, the, the front, thrusters, how it's that whole very, very cut, cutless. 
I love the fact that the mode, the engine module looks like it almost came off of a cut list. Like they're just re- reusing old parts mm-hmm. to make the new ship. And that's probably exactly what's going on there. Cause uh, it's supposed to be able to be field repairable and very, you know, simplistic and straightforward and reliable and durable. So, um, why not? Why not How use parts ridiculous off of another do ship? those thrusters look, though? Well, when Torque was racing with it, uh, weren't they trying to shoot the tunnel? Like, you know, daring each other to hit yeah. boost in the tunnel? Because yeah. they weren't even yeah. using boost. And everyone was bouncing off the walls and <laughs> overshooting yeah. everything. So it is going to be your dragster. You know, it almost 100, be... 8, 185 in SCM going all the way up to 1,000 with boost. Yeah. Right. That's just and, crazy. And remember like... that we don't have crews anymore with these new flight models that, that he yeah. is using. Right, they and we'll get more into the flight model afterward, but uh, yeah, I, I that's think just before, the boost. Before people before people explode into the what? Well, it, it kind of cruise seems to we're, have been yeah. I, I'm, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk. Yeah. That's a whole yeah. other discussion. Yeah. We're gonna so talk about panic. that in a little don't bit. Panic. Um, but but cruise as we know it is no longer Gone. exists. But there is something to replace it. So don't worry, those top speeds are still there. But yeah, the the amount of detail on the inside and all the di- different panels and like for me, like the the tech nerd part of me just wants to sit inside a herald and like yeah. look at all the different panels and push buttons and I don't know. It looks like a ham radio slash uh, like I grew up. My grandfather had a huge ham radio set up with a like a crazy um, six story tower in the backyard and everything. That's and so black. this yeah, and this reminds mm-hmm. me of of uh sort of what his office looked like and and what his hobbies were and so i think that's one of the reasons i'm so much into tech was because of him and Wires looking at this too. yeah looking know. at this it just yeah. you can see like all the different components and and everything else and it just it looks really definitely cool. beast so i one thing we did talk about a little bit on the live cast uh, was the um the gun racks and you're like well i'm thinking it doesn't make any sense it's not a boarding ship but it does if you land you pick up your weapon, you go outside. If your job is to go collect the data, just like a Brinks truck, you know, yeah. you'd have to do your own security. So mm-hmm. it only makes sense that you'd have uh, a weapon rack, bed, and like you say, the, the workstation and everything, and the tiered floor, uh, even the washroom, everything is very, very uh, space. Like it feels it feels like it would work in for real life. Right. Well, one Function. of the other things they talked about was also doing that, that bleeding edge exploration with this mm-hmm. type of ship as well, right? To sort of gather that data with the ship instead of grabbing uh, information that already exists, you know, getting that information on new systems, on new jump points and, and things like that. Now we've yep. seen it pretty much done for a while. Obviously it looks cool. It looks like it's like a bloated tick. Uh, mm. <laughs> you know, it's all engorged or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And uh, when I was talking to Twerk, he said he loved it. And the amount of power so is insane. <laughs> Just the amount of power from going from from SCM uh, to those cruise speeds is like it's crazy, and it really feels like that drag. Like mm. it, it feels like those thrusters serve a purpose. So for attacking it, that's going to be neat because you're going to have to sneak up on it, and and then you know as soon as you start shooting, he's just going to bugger off. So for entrapping and everything, there's going to be a certain gameplay. Uh, I like the fact that it's that fast. I almost. If I was in the ship, I would be very, very happy knowing that it has no guns, decent armor, and that you can just take off. Because mm-hmm. that's your only defense is to leave. That's good. And the fourth ship we saw. Now, this isn't necessarily coming in 2.6 like the other ones are. All of those other ships are uh, confirmed or semi-confirmed with the, uh, with the, the Caterpillar. Because the Caterpillar isn't quite done yet, but they think they'll have it done by the time 2.6 launches. And so they're going to put that in there with it. Woo! Now, this no. is the rework of the Cutlass. And a lot of people have been waiting for this. And I think most people are happy with this. I, I, I have right. heard um, some people that are still disappointed with the size of it and sort of where it's gone and, and why the Buccaneers come in and taken that role away from it but i think it it is very true to its original concept and it looks better than the original concept i think yeah yeah it makes more sense too having the weapons on the wings rather than on the bottom because in ac we just get knocked off 
So I actually see that as a really big right. improvement. Well, the wing, the weapons were on the wings before as well. But, but yeah. one of the one of the things um, I'm, I've paused on this one section where it shows the tractor mm -hmm. beam locations, which are there's two at the front on either side uh, where the wings come down, uh, mm -hmm. and it showed that on the original concept as well. And then there's also one at the back right before the the loading bay door. Something that's new is the boarding and assault bay doors. This is amazing. Which the van is door. Yeah. Amazing. And we see the same sort of style. It pulls the same sort of style from the Caterpillar as well, where you have those side doors opening. And oh, I saw us. It's on, they're on both sides. Those doors are on both sides. Are they on both sides? Oh, they are, too. Yeah. If you look at the... They fucking the, are. Yeah. I thought it was on one side as well. It's on both. Fuck. So, what I... Oh, you know what? I realized... It's bec they have the separation. I thought it was the beds were on the one side, but the beds are in the front. Because mm -hmm. yeah. there's a it's, wall the, now. The ship's become huge yeah. somehow. Like, it's got living quarters. It's got those two opening side doors. You'll be able to fire torpedoes through it. So it this, <laughs> this goes with uh, the Caterpillar as well. I'm hoping we get some sort of, like... You know how they have those, those uh, big deployable weapons from World... I don't know what they're called. The M60... Or something like that, the the M sixty Browning or whatever those big guns. Uh, big, they, yeah, yeah, 50 cal. yeah, yeah. The ones that they yeah. that are like that have the legs Browning. on them and yeah. and whatever. That, 50 that, cal. Yeah, Browning. okay. Barrett light. Yeah, so like having that, yeah. something like that, or having some sort of like setup like they have on helicopters, yeah. where they have the the big chain gun the door. And, and you open yeah. the door and just <laughs> that would be cool <laughs> for this. Right, because this is very much taking after like Russian helicopters and stuff like that. So having some sort of like uh, chain gun or something that's hanging out the side would be really awesome for the cutlass. Even the the go the Gauss rifle, the shoulder mounted Gauss rifle, right. that was confirmed a year ago. Get two guys on one door, and you're like, "Hey, guy!" And you open the door, and it's like, "Oh shit!" Right? Yeah. It's just like I don't, if it can do any type of actual damage, um, it might again. Sky's the limit. If they give us all of these tools to be able to make the universe that we want and come up with stupid shit like that, mm -hmm. it's gonna be it's gonna be hilarious. That's why people play Battlefield because uh, you can take C4 and put it on the front of the Jeep and then drive it into the I'm tank. I'm assuming you know? that with ships like this, you'll have to depressurize them before you open the doors if you're creating them. Well, mm. the f the yeah. thing is with this board is yeah. this would already be depressurized. This is the cargo area. So it's I not mean, the front the living case, quarters, right? Th this is a really cheap prowler, and it just makes me so happy. <laughs> it's a it cheap prowler. Me, it's a cheap yeah. prowler. I'm going to buy one. I mean, yeah. can have no stealth. I'm really it's glad I have all three of well, them. I, not only I that is it, also, and, and we knew this before, but actually seeing it, it's going to deploy at least one dragonfly. Yes, they 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 rework now. It obviously, that, that dragonfly is taking up cargo space, so you can't yeah. have a dragonfly and a bunch of cargo, uh, like like however much but, space they would take up. I think obviously, you, you can't get have two a, in there. I, I think, think you can get two in there. It, look at look at the it um. Does the look, it does look like you can <laughs> maybe get a couple in there. Oh, we'll have to really wait like and it. see. They they've made it. They they've changed it so that it's become what it's supposed to have been. It's 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 beautiful. Good job. It's finally, searching. it's finally a good ship to own. It, you actually have a purpose for it, and it has a pirate purpose. More importantly, yes, which is yes. what it was supposed to have since day one. So. And in the living quarters, you see uh, the entrance into the turret. You see the entrance into the cargo area. You see those beds, and I'm assuming on the other side, you're gonna have your weapon racks and all of that other stuff. Uh, it looks like it's gonna be sleeping four, uh, which is pretty awesome, right? You have your pilot, your co-pilot, your turret. And you're, say, a Dragonfly pilot, right? So there's all four right, beds. Ready there to go. For that. Yep. All ready to go. Did we confirm is... that the engines don't pitch around, right? The That's engines, gone? no. The, it shows here that for landing, they it'll do. have VTOL. Yeah. Oh, um, really? I don't know if they're going to be pitching around like they do now. In the video, yeah, I think they're going to have yeah. very limited movement. Yeah, in, that, in space. Probably. It looked great in the commercial, you know, like one engine turning and like doing aerobatics and shit. But when you're actually flying, if you go third person, it's they're just they're, all they're the always <laughs> just like going all over the place, like, and they move like to... the thing is they move like there's no weight to them, right? Fast. Mm -hmm. It's not uh, this. I, I'd be happy if they change position for landing mode and then just basically stay forward for flying. But the, the the overall like bulk 
of the the ship does give it more of that menacing feel does give it more of that like you know the 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 feel i think on what they originally wanted to go with also that new the how they've ang- made instead of just square they've made the the cockpit a little more angular um i think that adds a lot to it I think for me, I want that if someone spots a cutlass near them in an asteroid field, that they then immediately look around for other ships. <laughs> so that's the that's the sort of thing I want to have to have that kind of role there, to have that kind of feel and fear. Um, it Just does look so good now. Now the other, other thing new... too is the right. b- before we go, uh, there's six weapons now. So they've removed the nose weapon. And mm. I had confirmation yesterday from uh, Matt Sherman. They are all size 3 hard points. Now, that being said, I believe it's coming with size 2 on gimbals under the mm. wings and the ones that are on the body. The ones on the body are really cool. I'm really excited to set, set this whole thing up with six mantises and just to see what it looks like. It's yeah. just going to be, it's just going to look Fire. ridiculous. Um, but they are six size 3 hard points that it comes with so two size three hard points on the turret two size three hard points on the body and two size three hard points underneath the wings as well and is it still going missily at all there are going to be there are confirmed that it is going to come with missiles as well we don't okay. know what what missiles they're going to come with i imagine they're What's still the going to come with those cluster it's, yeah, yeah rattle, rattler the Rattlers, yeah. Rattler ones. But um, we've got the new modular missile system as well, so that might be changing a lot of the ship's mm-hmm. missile loadouts somewhat. So what about flash fire? Are we going to... Like, there's no point in theorizing whether or not you'll be able to replace the turret with one more size 4, for example. But uh, um, can and, you imagine and getting Hayes, all that? Hayes 07 is saying that's wrong. There has to be four size 3 and two size 2 on the turret. That is incorrect. I will tell you once again that uh, the loadout confirmed... <laughs> They don't know the weapons that are going on it yet, but the loadout confirmed is six size three weapons. Two size three mounts on the wings, two size three mounts on the body, and two size three mounts on the turret. It Good. does it does out, out uh, does have two extra size three weapons over a uh, freelancer. Right, which is getting back to what Ben Lesnick... Remember, like, that year where we really had nothing to talk about? The ship just kept ballooning and people were hype, you know, going mm-hmm. on and figuring out what the ship would be. Um, then it turned into the super killing ship. And now it's back down to something really, really useful. And it's fine. I think it's okay for it to have six size threes. Because you should, again, you should fear the Cutlass because it was... It was sold like that. The pirate pack was supposed to be, you know, this ass kicking ship that could take on a super hornet and come out not necessarily on top, but give it a good fight. And it can't do that in Arena Commander in its current state. And I can see that in the future with with the uh, all of the weapon systems that that will in fact be something that uh, a hornet guy would be like, oh, maybe maybe I'll get another hornet or something. So. Good yeah. job, CIG. I like Very, it. the rework looks amazing. I'm really yeah. excited. I can't. I'm really, really excited to get that in uh, and play around with it for sure. Obviously, the Caterpillar I love. The Buccaneer I'm really excited to see. Uh, the Herald, the the Dragonfly, um, all of those. All the, all the My Drake ships are almost done. And I'm yep. so excited. And they're, so, they're, uh, they've unified everything with the style guide and everything, and that's really important as well. There's also the Hoplite floating around. But we've already talked a right. lot about the now hop the hop light. light only changes the interior, uh, and in the ramp. back, and and it the is ramp effectively is a little a bit different, different. An entirely different hull, though, because they have yeah. stripped out stuff in this. And it gets rid of well, the bulkhead. It's a, it's a different the module, door. right? So it no. will no, no, it's, it's a not, whole no. new it's ship. It's not a module. It's a whole yep. new ship. Yeah. Oh, okay. So the Vanguard, where that back door is, you know, the ramp, and then you go upstairs, and then right. there's a door, and then you go into the module, yeah. and then there's another door, and you go into the cockpit. That door is missing and the ramp instead of being triangular shaped is full is a rectangular now yeah. yeah and that's to get people off fast and there's no once that door opens that depressurizes everything except where the pilot is so uh it's actually i'm interested to see like obviously that we've seen 3d models of it and everything like that but to actually see it i want to see how much it costs because again mm-hmm. it's just a vanguard people <laughs> it's not like yeah. a super vanguard uh i'm quite curious to see what they do with the nose guns because the whole thing about the front is the gigantic 
uh, Gatling and the four size twos right. that are on the nose make to me makes it a very very dangerous ship. And all of that is pew pew for the the pilot, which is fantastic because he can drop people off and then loiter and still have effect from the outside by himself, even without that crew. So um, very, very interesting to see that. And of course, too, the the original concept for the Vanguard, the turret was retractable into the into the top, uh, whether or not that's a thing or not. It might be neat just to leave it I flat. I don't think it's a thing anymore, but no. um, you can see why they wanted it for Squadron 42. I can imagine some amazing cinematics yeah. where the vanguard is doing some pew pew as it well, drops we, off its men but we've done that in the past like uh, my my org we did a flyby with a um a, a lancer on korea and we had the door down while it was at uh quantum I saw, i've seen that and I've it was just it was so cool because everything is jiggling right i, I don't know if that's intended <laughs> or not in the game but everything's jiggling and the, the space is just going and then you see the planet disappear and then you're like, man, this is a game. And it's not even a game. It's an alpha of a game. And it's like a semi-broken alpha of a great game. So uh, the fact that it worked, everyone made it there on time. The guy called out. We jumped out. And it worked. And I'm like, my God, the game is not even done yet. And it works. Mm -hmm. Like, we have that level of gameplay. So once once we get the stability and the function where people aren't going to clip through the floor and the jiggle maybe isn't, that's not supposed to be there is gone, mm -hmm. um, I can actually, I know... I know for sure that this is a game I want to play. It's very, very cool. Jiggling, jiggle physics. Confirmed. 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 Um, yeah. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to say, Xperia Prowler. I want you guys to talk about it. I have the video up. I really need to go to the washroom. So I'm going to be right back. But the video is up. Uh, yeah. What did you like about it? What didn't you like about it? Discuss. Go ahead. I, mean, I, di I didn't like the film Final Fantasy Spirits Within. Um, no, 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 let's not, <laughs> let's not do that. Um, so I, I thought it looks beautiful. It looks like a, um, angry bird gorilla. Um, and I love the idea of it. I love the idea that it's a proper drop ship. It's not a, it's not a ship to ship ship. It's, it hasn't got that ship to ship combat. It, it relies on stealth and speed and high levels of technology. And to short do range. Stuff. Cause the QA drops. Indeed, yeah, the yeah. QA drops it, so it was short range. It's not this. It's not this long range drop ship. But the idea is of um, obviously not docking with another ship. But you are. You can go to a capital ship, it hopefully not detect you, and you can just kind of hover on its hull with your grab plates, and it won't detect you. You can just kind of follow it, uh, and then your passengers EVA out, and it's got all those shields there, and it just well four doors. Like people leave out of their own door on each, on each side. Four yeah, on each which, side. Which is fantastic. And then I imagine the, the turret's going to be... Remember how they had a pilot and the, the gunner um, stacked on top of each other? It's mm -hmm. just it's just very alien. And everyone's all like, oh, it's it's $400. And it's, how is this different than a hoplite? And I guess if you're asking that question, you have to say, why am I paying money for the game anyways? Because you could use that argument all the way up and down. You know, why, why would I buy an Aurora? Well, you know? There are very there are some good differences between them. So uh, the Hoplite and the Redeemer, for example, uh, mm -hmm. one's a fighter. The Hoplite is a fighter dropship, yeah. um, and the Redeemer is much more of a gunship. Yeah. But the um, the Prowler, it's got Self. it can carry sixteen crew, mm -hmm. so which fourteen of which could jump out of the side mm -hmm. um, and EVA across. It's got it, it, it's that stealth aspect as well as you yeah. said. It's stealthy. It's fast. Yeah, it's short range. I just thought of something. If you saw a Vanguard coming at you, a hoplite, you might not notice or may not recognize it as being a, a boarding ship specific. Yeah, you could any, probably any of the Vanguards. So if yeah. you had like a bunch of Vanguards and had that one boarding ship and they were all coming at you, like obviously you know people are up to no good. That's, well, that's it's just fine. it's the same way as like a with a cutlass or a caterpillar. You don't know what's in those modules. Right. But that prowler comes at you, you know that that thing has one purpose in life. It's not coming to trade with you. No. <laughs> the, the, one of the ideas, like with the Terrapin, kind of, um, or with any stealth ship, I suppose, is you don't want it to be seen. You don't, yeah. want, you don't want the enemy to see. And the, the idea of this Prowler is that it can get in and get out so undetected. What would, as what would you pilot. escort it with? Would you escort it with a Sabre or some other ship that we haven't seen yet? So you I, would... you, I wouldn't escort it at all. I have a fleet nearby. You okay. have something nearby. Yeah, QRFs. 
yeah, and, and, and you call those guys in once you're on board. Once okay, the sabotage so. has been completed and you're ready to go, that's when you attack. And during the battle, that's when you fucking detonate your charges away. Yeah, and the, QA, you shooting shit up. the QA did spe- specify that it was very quick. And then the question was, is it faster than a hoplite? And then they covered, it was nice because they, they kind of covered their ass and they said, yes and no. well, <laughs> yes and no, depending on if you use boost or not. You're like, well, that's not really an answer. But anyway, it is now. It is it now. Is. Yeah. Now, one of the things I really liked about this, too, and this is the first time we're going to see this with ships uh, so far, and I wonder if this is going to be a style guide with them moving forward. Uh, also, we saw what they actually look like, and I'll pull them up oh, here uh, after the video. They, but yeah. cool. you can't see inside the ship at all. There's no two-way windows. They're all one-way. Now, yeah. something I've talked about before is I would really like to see something similar to what they do in Titanfall, where they have the cameras and then you're looking at screens inside somewhere, in, inside okay. maybe a very heavily armored ship. With this one, it's um, I don't think that's the case. I think it's just a one-way it, material. It's part, of the hard, it's part of the hardening process for that material right. makes it one way. Right. A little read of the law. A little... So, <laughs> well, a little lore monkey here. <laughs> well, what, well, what you were talking about, Soros, about having screens like inside a Titan, that's um, that's how the Karak with the blast shield coming down is supposed to work. It's supposed to be, once the screen's down, it's projected reality. So it's not going to look as pretty as outside. But you remember that uh, Z-War, an old uh, tank game where it was like all vector? Yes. That, that would be awesome. Like that all the stars and everything are there and you can still see icons. So like, you know, you lock on an enemy and it gives you the circle with the directional arrow. But like you can't see the elite. <laughs> right, but you can't see the actual thing. You just know where it is, and you can know to aim there because your crosshairs are still there, but you can't actually see it because your blast doors are down. That would be awesome, especially like you're saying in this, because we already have modern-day uh, remote turret-operated weapon systems. Like uh, There are uh, guns on the back of certain IFVs that are a driver or the gunner is looking at a TV screen and that's all he's looking at CCTV and he's able to engage. So why wouldn't they have that a thousand years in the future? Why couldn't the pilot do exactly like you say, just right. look at a just big, have a big, big, big screens that wrap around them and everything right. until it gets knocked out because you got damage and then you wish you yeah. had a window. Right, so exactly. Think, but that is cool. That would be cool to have that sort of gameplay come in, right? When an yeah, EMP the guy has to go to the back and when fix. an EMP actually has a lot more of effect on a ship like that. Right, you can't see anything. The guy's got to go to the back, and even if he just has to reset circuit breakers or something, I don't know. I'm right. just pulling shit out of my ass. A prowler that might be a really good like centerpiece in a pirate fleet now as well. To literally, you go in with a load of men on it. And you start, you start your, you sabotage, you get all the stuff ready on like a capital ship or, mm. or a, a large ship, and then you call your cutlasses in. And those cutlasses don't have to have full crews on because they're mm. coming to pick up the men and the cargo. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, I, okay, I really like that. Yeah. The ship, I like the ship. I like the fact that it is the first of its line that we've seen. And it's okay that it's a reproduction based on a, on a, you know, Earth company or, or whatever. It's fine. And that's, that, that lore was started with the scythe, and that makes sense that captured scythe is a real one, and the other ones are just uh, reproductions. But it's so nice because it gives CIG the ability to offer uh, us mortals all these wonderful, crazy ships and have it make sense in the universe. So, good now, job. I like that too. My capture card is doing its thing again. Okay. Uh, where it's not... Oh, we're doing showing... fine without it. No, no, okay, there we go. I just had to pop it out for it to be weird. But I have the Tavarin uh, concept up right now of what they actually look like. I think they're the coolest of the races so far. They're very... I, it, I was expecting the colors to be opposite. I was expecting them to be primarily gold. Yeah, like with, crazy. With the, where the gold highlights are, that would be blue or that would be red. Um, and... And also seeing some sort of more, and I talked about this before, more Egyptian feeling with the masks, like more Anubis or oh, like mm-hmm. uh, eagle like Stargate, like they're more, they're more, ja- like, they're like more Japanese ornate, the aren't they? Rather yeah. than than um, than Egyptian. But I do think that they they are going to have those Egyptian vibes still. It's, it is Egyptian Bushido. That's, that's what's right. going on yep. here. Yeah. 
Um, it's good. Like I, I think that was really funny. There was a guy that did up, like took that picture you have up there, and he put eyeballs and a beak on it and everything. It made it look like mm-hmm. a bird. It's like there you go. That's what they look like without their mask on. <laughs> it and like, it's it's like, very much a possibility. We don't know what they look like yet. Right. Now with but the prowler, um, did any of you guys buy one? Nope. No. No. Gonna get no. I'm, instead, I'm, mate. I'm waiting for the hoplite. For my org, the hoplite makes more sense. Even though it can't carry 16 people, uh, I see, I could see taking a hoplite into a normal battle, but I can't see taking a prowler into a normal battle. So to right. me, the hoplite makes more sense because at the end of the day, it's still a vanguard. It still has all the weapons and everything that goes with it. And I, I can leave the back empty. It doesn't matter. You still even have the turret. It's as functional as a normal warden without... The, and then you could stop, drop, and do the boarding missions if you need to. So right. to me, it, it's really, really good. Like if you like a if you like a warden, you might as well go get a hoplite. It just doesn't make any sense. We haven't seen it yet, but that's my assessment so far. Yeah, for me, that's sort of what my caterpillar does. And so yeah. it's like, well, do I need to do that with a caterpillar? Like I I can do that already for the most part. So it's like mm-hmm. why. Why would I get something? Uh, I guess for the the um, exoticness of it. Sweet boobs, okay. Bart. What music's, Thanks, going, <laughs> what music's going on in your head? Oh, no, there isn't any. <laughs> he's just he's just jamming. Uh, just a reminder, guys, if anybody has a question, exclamation point question in chat. Yeah. Um, and with the hoplite, do we have... Any idea on what uh, the price is? No, no, not yet for that. It's going to be three hundred or more, though. No, because it's the new shiny. Yeah, because the nah, even two eighty, two eighty. I'm thinking. No, because the harbinger is already there, so they have to make it so that people can upgrade from have it. Have you ever sat CCU. down next to a If they make it two eighty, all the guys that bought the harbinger are going to be screwed because they're going to have to melt and buy again okay, instead of just. What do you mean? Well, how does that screw you? It's going to have lifetime insurance. No, Who but does that they, screw? they could have a hard. No, no, because if it's so it has to be more. Oh, no, because it can be equal. You're right. It could be it equal, could, but it doesn't even have to be equal because it can be, it can be, it could be it 260. Be, okay. Yeah, I think it's melt. They can melt their ship and then make some savings and have LTI. But the new shiny is always a little bit more expensive. And I'm sorry, yeah, that right. that's the reality. I know in your heart of hearts, you're like, <laughs> please make it the normal price. I'm saying. It's going to be. I expect it to be three hundred. I wouldn't be remotely shocked if it was three hundred. If it was three fifty, I'd be frustrated. But like, because that's to me is is as dumb as charging nine hundred dollars for an eight ninety. Don't say it. Yeah. Don't say okay. Because he just bought it. Remember, he has buyers remorse about mm. the eight ninety jump. In case oh. in case you're new and you you know just got here. Board Gamer is the lucky recipient of a brand new 890 jump, and he's having buyer's remorse. Now, Maybe. let's go over what ships are on sale today yep. uh, with the Origin sale. Um, so obviously, the 890 jump is uh, one of those elusive ones. I'm going to pull up the uh, the Galactic Tour, and yep. we'll play that with audio here. There's some nice uh, packages that they've got together. They've got uh, where you quiet two racers, M50 and a 350R. Mm-hmm. And I didn't work out the math yet, but I'm assuming it's, uh, you know, price advantageous. And then there's one that's got your 350R, your M50, and Mag85. One second, one second, one second. Okay. For the video. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'm listening to the story. Is, I, I do like the these. Evening. I gotta mute you for a second. Jump. Video's playing. To be playing. perfectly honest, I can't think of a better way for Origin ships to be celebrated than with drunken revelry. From day one, Origin has been crafting vehicles that are as fun to fly as they are to look at. I'm talking the stuff of locker posters, the kind of ship that few middle-aged pilots can resist the allure of. Sure, people may think you're a pompous ass if you come cruising up to the local Cryastro in one, but what do you care? You own a 350R, and they don't. Of course, the fantasy does tend to fade a bit when you have to fly an Origin ship day in, day out, and a few of the more questionable design choices start to rear their ugly heads. Yes, for that much money, you'd expect the seat to be comfortable. And sure, they tend to drift more than a senator making a promise. But then again, who cares when you're flying a ship that looks as good as their new 85X? 
Speaking of looking good for an exorbitant amount of credits, I'm about to go and get custom fitted for a high-tech racing suit, guaranteed to shave seconds off my lap time. Find out just how tightly it hugs to the curves of my body when our coverage of the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo continues. And there we go. So there is the video for that. Am I allowed I, to talk again? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it just is. I, people can't hear any either just, when I'm, both are I'm gone. messing with you. I, I didn't notice how much that, he, that character thrusts until I just watched him and didn't listen to him. He just, mm -hmm. he just thrusts constantly. It's very, it's very sexual. Are we going to talk about the Drake girls in the last commercial? Yeah, I don't yeah, know if you guys noticed that. Still, you know, like you go to a bed. car show. Uh, yeah, no, we definitely, so, definitely noticed it. Definitely saw yeah. the so the people come out. The five people complain about it. I, I got triggered just thinking about people complaining about them. I knew it was going to happen. It's no, inevitable. it's cool though. Right. But people have to realize that it's they're trying to make a commercial seem real. And if you go to an actual trade show, that's real. Anybody so, who's been to a car show. Yeah. That's that's a car show. That's it's cars like, and booth babes. Pe people get triggered and find certain things offensive. They are totally within their rights to find those things offensive. Right. And clear, non-aggressive debate and explaining your, your, your view is yeah. fine. I'm not a vegan. I have friends that are <laughs> vegan. We can communicate. It's great. I don't think that was sexist. I no. think that was showing yeah. a mature game um, concept where they went... Booth babes exist. Drake, like booth yeah. babes, Star Citizen's going to have slavery. Yeah. There are going to be games <laughs> online that have very, very high level mature content yeah. based on like murder each other and stuff like that. That is yeah. high level shit. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot worse than having a chick standing with a gun in a bikini. But what I'm saying is that they are all elements of a story and we should all be mature about them. Now, if right. stuff is over-sexualized and brutal in its, like, well, this is no. disrespectful for women or disrespectful to this particular gender or race or whatever, just for the, just because it can sort of thing. It has no yeah. story element. It has no reason to be. That is when you should go, this oh, is bullshit. It's good. This yeah. is, it's a this you, get, you can fun. talk as much sense into that as you want. Um, there, people, and, but people, people yeah. And, and, yeah, and you know, there's going to be those people that are professional uh what is the best word I can think of here? Professional. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, professional offenders. So they're okay. always just offended about everything <laughs> and anything. I don't eat and, vegans. Uh, I don't eat yeah. vegans. That is true. <laughs> but I, I think even though, even people that are professional offenders, as you as you term them, or yeah. people that are, are very highly strung about it, whatever, that they're they're totally entitled to their opinion. Oh, for and sure. I think that it, it, it's that I, I and I quite like polarizing debates about stuff as long as everyone is civil. Mm. Um, it's it's an interesting conversation, and I think that the thing is, it very very quickly gets out of hand. It can, it can, and that's what and that's what most, you're saying. Most times, as long right. as everyone, if everyone just right. approaches it like a human being and an adult, and uh, you know, so the getting back to the whole point, I guess, was it's <laughs> it's part of it's in that context, it makes sense, and it would be real life today. And if you go to a car show and you're offended by it, that's the same. That's the same thing as you watching it at a car show on Galactic, whatever, on, no, it's on not, Star it's Citizen. it's not the same thing. Isn't it? Because Star Citizen has to have those, those mature, it can have those mature story elements in the same yeah. way that drug production can be a thing. It's mm -hmm. not the same as going to see a car show where uh, it's not the same as murdering someone in game. But if you go to a car show, you expect to see it because it's part of the car culture and it's part of the trade show the, the, yeah. it's it's part oh, of it's part of the environment yeah. right okay, you I, go there expecting to see it because it's a real thing and not just, just like, not just car conventions there's a lot of different no, conventions everywhere i, I think those yeah. car conventions that you're talking about could be seen as sexist because it's a real life thing it's not a story narrative it's no. not we are showing um the like a wanted uh uh, uh taken it's about mm -hmm. like the sex trade mm -hmm. it's about girls getting taken i mean mm -hmm. it, watching right. that doesn't make you sexist but mm -hmm. it, it, because this, the, the film portrays okay that so i'm of, gonna cut you off life. right here and we're not gonna get we're not i'm <laughs> not i'm not getting into this because yeah, no i can get into this for a long time so moving right. forward um moving forward. 
So for the different prices and sales uh, today, obviously the Avenger came out, uh, which is the Avenger Renegade uh, Titan. Uh, there's both the Warbond <laughs> and the non-Warbond for that. Um, as well as all of your different uh, origin ships, and there's a couple different origin packages as well. You said there was a racing one. I don't have them yep. up right now. So, so there's, there's uh, two. There's the Mega Pack, which has Awaka ships, and then there's the Intro Pack, which is just the M50 and the 350R. But uh, again, 48 month insurance. So if you have uh, a previous version of that ship, now's your time to melt it and buy it again. So uh, 85x 315. Uh, M50, 350R, 325A, and a 300I for $420 with 48 months. So that's pretty much the, the only issue I have is that that's a big cross section of very similar ships. Mm -hmm. But um, you could always use that to build a fleet. You buy that one pack and then you uh, CCU the ones you don't want. So if someone in chat can work out the, the price, I'm I'm sure it's going to come up with like a forty dollars savings or something like that if you buy the pack, like they usually do. <clears throat> yeah, I'm surprised it's not on Reddit already. And yeah, Ben confirmed there are going to be a thousand uh, thirty dollar Star Citizen packages. Now, what we don't know, and I don't know if if I know Matt's in chat, and I don't know if uh, he can confirm or whatever. He he probably doesn't know. If those packages are both Star Citizen and Squadron 42, or if they're just Star Citizen. Okay, that's a good point. I assume yeah. just Star Citizen. Yeah, I would just, it's okay, just, so I would normally yeah. assume it's just Star Citizen, but every time yeah. they've done these $30 sales, it's been both. Okay. But that was before the breakup. Uh, still. Yeah. Uh, I know, I'm, I'm it may saying... be the same skew. But the thing is, we won't know until the weekend. I, I guess so, the way to look at it is... If you have an opportunity to buy one, let me see if I can find uh... buy one for yourself uh, for sure, and keep it to give to a friend. So buy it with cash, and get another citizen involved because that's what those are actually for. They're not designed just to pad your account with extra bots. They're designed to uh, to make it so that yeah, people want to. So people that want to get into the game can get into it right. in a low price point. And those people can't actually buy them because we F5, F5, F5 until it goes live. We buy 10 and it goes sells out in like four minutes. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I'd like I'd like people to use them what they're for. Right. Chris. Now, what, what are your what are your uh, feelings on this? Because I know a lot of people do this. I've done this in the past. I'm mm -hmm. not saying I'm going to do it this time. I may. I haven't decided yet. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, people like like content creators and things like that that are buying them to give them away. What are your awesome? Yeah, I think it's great. I'm, I'm I would be hypocritical if I said that it wasn't because I do. Right. Uh, for me, it's it's fantastic because at the end of the day, I know that someone's not making a profit on it. I would mm -hmm. buy it and I would give it away, and that person gets a hundred percent value. And I'm not and it's not know, like they can turn the around and and sell it or anything like that. It's theirs. They can melt it down and make it into something that they want if that's not what if the, what they want isn't what they want. But um, no, I, I think it's fine. Uh, I know myself, I've been buying uh, particular ships with the intention of in the future uh, unmelting them and giving them away. So, yes, that's the CCU system and the uh, 85X together for me is fantastic for that because it lets me, right. uh, you know, do what I want to do for the content and for the community. And last but not least, we have the schedule report. And I think this mm. was the biggest Woo! thing that uh, they talked about. And there will be a link below the, the video. Or if you type exclamation point ETA in chat, um, which I will do right now, it will bring up the link for this. So if you want to follow along. But this was awesome. Uh, this is something that I know a lot of people have been asking for for a long time. This is something that I've been wanting to see for a long time. Um, and, and more of a peer into the behind the curtains of what's going on and, and what their internal JIRA release dates are and, and things like that. Now, before we get into this, I want to be very, very clear uh, about these caveats, right? They, just because these are their dates doesn't mean that that's when those things are going to happen. Not only could those things be later than that, sometimes by days or even weeks, but they can also come in earlier than that as well, right? It really depends. 
it really it's depends. It's a target. On, yeah, it's, it's one of their yeah. targets, but those that, that's exactly what they are. They are targets. They are estimates. Um, mm-hmm. They're based on their knowledge and experience of what they've done with those kind of things previously. Um, but there's a lot of things that Star Citizen is doing that you know is new territory for them and so figuring uh, or anybody as a mm-hmm. matter of fact so so figuring those things out uh there those those dates are going to be very very fluid now um the other thing that was mentioned was this was going to be updated weekly now we don't know i don't think we know what day that's going to be or if there is a specific day that they're going to be aiming I assume for assume friday but mm-hmm. yeah so uh we will see, I think, this week, the, right? The nice the nice thing is, though, we asked week? for this. Like, this is something that we've... Yes. I think we had it in the past, and then it kind of went away, that we were getting uh, less specific information as the community grew and as the project grew. And uh, especially kind of salty about Citizen Con. Some people were upset because they didn't feel that we had a clear idea on what was going on. This is extremely necessary. This level of... Uh, these are the 15 things that we're working on right now, mm-hmm. and this is where we think that they are. Not this is where they will be, because, like you said, Unless, the community has to still remember it's Jello, just because the date comes and goes. And the only the to only get. exception to that is mm. if when they uh, update those dates, the date has already passed for that. So there are a lot yeah. of things that were already in here, like the character art, for example, that's done. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. having things like, um, uh, like some gotta, of the, some of the level got to be accurate. Yeah. Once a week, once a week, they should reassess every single thing that's on that list. If they think it's going to go long, then push it long right away. Don't wait for it to fall well, off. I, right. I think the idea is it's it's literally the internal dates that will get updated weekly. Perfect. To show that's, that's actually that's actually what I want to yeah. see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you'll see those timelines get pushed along, you'll see the dates change, you'll see exactly where they are with them then, and you'll see underneath it will literally describe, we've, we've just finished this, we've just finished this, and you'll be able to see and compare from week to week. Right. And that is the biggest part of open development that we've had ever. If they continue doing this, this is fucking amazing. Now this is game. something they said that they want to continue doing, um, but, but as long as, you know, they realize that no matter what they do, people are going to complain one way or another. Mm -hmm. But as long as the overall majority understands that these are liquid, that these don't mean 2.6 is absolutely coming out on December 8th. Right? I get everybody, I get, I'm getting people that come into my chat and are like, it's coming out the 8th. Did you see it's coming out on the 8th? It's like, no. That's their their goal is for the eighth. No, that doesn't mean. But that's it's why I make videos and that's why you stream to make sure that everyone, like we, I actually this could sound arrogant, but CIG must really appreciate the amount of uh, effort that we take into making sure that everyone gets the information because but they also must hate it when we hype things. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. It's yeah. coming out on the eighth, guys. <laughs> you know, I can just imagine. Yeah. No, but like that's that's the only reason I started was because I. I wanted to help people get a better understanding of all of the facets, not just what you see from that one or two clips or that one post. I want to contextualize and put put it into perspective so that it's easier for people to understand. And I'm learning just as much as everyone. It just so happens that I, I really, really like to research and read more into it. So that's, uh, that's the only reason that I do it. But th- this is as detailed for me as a monthly report and you yeah. can look at some of the things you can go you can go to break down per section as well so it goes star marine section um from 2.6 you can see that they've uh, just completed uh character art and uh they've just uh completed the specifically marine and outlaw material updates uh, and then you can see that um level design for last stand and elimination for uh, damien station is an eta of the 18th of november mm-hmm. it's it's that that detailed in the breakdown of stuff and very bullet pointy. It's not so, a word salad. It's beautiful. And the so thing is, we... is, this is what they actually use internally. So it's not yeah. like they have to go and write this all up. It's a lot of it is just copying and pasting this. It's stuff a photocopy. Over. Mm-hmm. Well, now, well, what would you really no, need they, with they, with they, with some things? They can't. They don't. Stuff, obviously, all this yeah. Squadron Forty Two stuff. I don't yeah, yeah. think they're going to no, do no, anything no. like so that they, with this. They've also changed a lot of the the terminologies and stuff. Right. So right. It, it it has been made more viewable by us. 
Um, yeah, so like, for example, it's called missiles. Easter Egg Mission instead of mm -hmm. what it's probably uh, gone into detail with what they've oh. talked about in there, right? So with that, it says Easter Egg Mission instead. Uh, with right. with uh, certain things... Now, there are some things that just don't make any sense, right? Like a serialized variable. I have no idea what that means. And that's like one of the longest ones out. Um, you know, the message there, ordering. I'm not... Are there or any devs in entity chat, bind you know? culling. You know, there's, there's a lot of the, this stuff like uh, that has to do with a network... And the serialized variable, which is a stretch goal, which I'm, is more on the network engineering side of things, that I, I'm not quite sure what that means exactly, and I'm I, sure it's going to go over make, the head of a lot of people. I will make videos, I'm sure we all, uh, we all will at some point, uh, on explaining those terms and exactly mm -hmm. what they mean for each of these things. That's a good shout. Can we, can we ask CIG to put ETA next to every single date so that it's potentially more clear to people that it's not locked down at 8 November. An extra ETA. That's a great idea. Actually. Every An yeah. extra one. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah. So it's not just implied. It's there. I mean, it is it really, it, it's not implied. I mean, it's obviously yeah. there, but adding extra stuff, extra signposting is always good. Extra, extra detail. Yeah. yeah. Just so people can't briefly look at it or if somebody like cut a piece of it out. Yeah. Or whatever, plus and that's plus all minus, seen. you know, from plus <laughs> minus. Yeah. No, that's that's totally right. That's a good shout. Um, so that to me though was was the biggest thing of this whole event, and I think that's what made it really really uh, big for this event. Now we don't have very many questions today, um, so we're gonna jump over to those. But if you guys have any questions, feel free to get those in. Um, we're gonna go through these right now. Um, the first question is from Hybrid V. He says, hey, cool kids and board gamer. Uh, oh. CIG. <laughs> he's like, hey, you said my name. Uh, CIG has more and more recently talked about the ideas they plan on putting into the game and the overall complexity they're trying to achieve. As a relative newcomer to the game, I'm starting to feel like the game may become incredibly dense for starting players. This was one of the reasons why I couldn't sit Eve or Elite Dangerous for too long since it felt I needed to watch several hours of tutorials and guides before I could even safely pilot a starship and earn some money. Do you think CIG is planning on taking a different approach to guiding new players? And if so, what are they possibly? Mm -hmm. I think there's going to be loads and loads of different types of starting mission for whatever role you want to do. Um, and you can probably do all of them or some of them. You're, uh, you're missing uh, the big glaring slap in the face. Squadron mm. 42 is going to walk oh, you course. through literally Not everything. Not everyone's going to have that. Not everyone's Not going to have, that. have that, but that's what's going to be there. Number two is they've removed the one for the time being, but tutorials. And I'm sure mm -hmm. they're going to have a bunch of tutorials in there um, uh, uh, that will do the different flight. Think, just the basic flying, basically I mean, FPS. I think the worry stuff. for a lot of people is there's going to be so many game mechanics for mining, for planetary landing, for boarding. For, uh, for for all of the actual like um, ast the asteroid but mining, that's the that's mining. the fun of the game anyways though you you yeah, learn but... how to fly so you get in you get your tutorial you get your squadron 42 yep. you understand the basic universe and the the controls and then you say i want to go learn how to be a miner so you go get a prospector and you go try it out now whoa, 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 are, whoa, whoa, whoa. i mean go get a prospector you, you know what i mean just well, hear no, me no, out. don't and a lot of people, a lot of people are going to get the the Eve vibe, where they look at it and they just go, "Where do I start?" That yeah. stuff has to be signposted so well that you don't have to. Well, the worry other, about the, where well, the other thing, board gamer mm. is it's clearly the, well, a mining ship. Well, but no, well, not even that. It, that that's almost irrelevant. You also have okay. to remember that everything is skill based in this, and just yes. like in real life, do you know how to run an oil derrick? Do you know how to go mine in real no. life? Right. That's so right. No. that's something you're you going to have research. to learn and you're going to have to part go do that on your no no not even out of the game. You it's something No, I said it's part of the game. Yeah, it's, as part of the game it's yeah. it's going to be really important that you go out there and you learn how to do that from the very beginning. And yeah, you know, it's going to be a lot of trial and error and stuff like that. And I think that's one of the beauties of the game. And and that's Appealing. where it comes in into where you know, everything is skill based like that. So it's important that you know, somebody who knows how to uh, do mining effectively as to opposed to someone who's never done it before and hasn't done any research on it. You know, there, there is, it's, it's going to have that, that, uh, real life disparity, just like 
it it does in real life. It's a positive gonna, rather than a negative. To me, that's a say, positive. What were you going to say, Neil, before I falcon punched you and interrupted you like a, <laughs> a bastard? I apologize. No, I was going to say, uh, just go get a, like I said, just go get a prospector. I saw it up in chat. Yes, just go get a prospector and go out and try it. You can, it's okay to go out and try it and, and suck at it. That's just like Sora said, is you're supposed to not know how to do it. There's not mm. supposed to be a match. No, hear me no. out. Okay, so yeah, yes, you're, you're going to make a video on how to do it. And that's, people are actually going to go watch it and they're going to learn and they're going to get great value out of it. And then they're going to go have fun. Some people, some people might not want to do that. And for those people, they just want to go try it and push this button. And, oh, I'm making less money. You know, maybe, okay, I'm just dumbing it down a lot, but. No, 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 it's fine, it's fine. Is the, is the prospector going to come with a, a manual, just like you would if you bought a car? It should. Why wouldn't it have an expl uh, you know, a PDF that comes with your ship when you buy it? This, this is what this button does, and this is what this system does, and it's not supposed to go after, you know, coal, but it's going to go after gold, no problem. I don't know. Again, it's all hearsay, but I, the original question was, should it be easy? One, no. I don't think so. And is it is it okay for it to be hard? I guess it's the same question. Yes, I think it's okay I because want, no, I ahead. would want to see in game uh, two things. I want to see <laughs> missions that, uh, as you said, you just get kind of given a prospector. You mm -hmm. might have to pay. You get you get given a from the job well. They go, uh, we need uh, someone oh. to pilot this prospector. Go here, mine this. In arena commander, so, in what's the point of having a hollow? thingy yes if you can't just go use it i also you know? want to see training missions like that in right. arena so you commander. go pay yeah. ten thousand credits and you get a usb stick you can go to your thing and learn how to because that would be in the future that's that's totally feasible just like you can do it now you pay someone they give you an online course so why couldn't you do that in the future and that's what I, the two the things I'd like to see. The, yeah. the, the stuff that I want to do videos on is becoming the most efficient at doing that. Like, this is how you get the most value out of money. Not, mm -hmm. a, well, I probably will do basic oh. tutorials as well. Phantom's because... got it. He said that when you buy the ship, it comes with a hyperlink to my YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Winning. <laughs> um, our next question is from Catafor. And he says, last week I asked if orgs could hire buildings. Just to clarify, and, and you guys know the big uh, kerfuffle me and Twerk got into, uh, I meant uh, hiring a skyscraper and not a hangar. I would imagine that if your org consisted of 100,000 people, you could apply for a building on a planet via Spectrum to CIG or something like that, and the org would pay rent for it every month. Why would you want a, a building in the city? Well, you could have a headquarter for bragging rights. You could also have a spa on the bottom floor on the bar for members to hang out. Other perks, such as not having to declare gar gods, I don't know what that means, walking past security, etc. Also love your show. My argument to that would be, why wouldn't you be able to put all of those things into a hangar? Oh, not this. Not, I can think yeah. fuck there's, Zerg's not here. Yeah, there's no... Oh, there's no it, I, I was just like, why would you... I'm not saying that it's not a good idea and it wouldn't be cool, but why wouldn't you be able to put all of these things into a hangar and have that on planet? Uh, uh, see what happens. We'll see what happens with yeah. how they implement stuff like that. So is he talking about buying like a building in Area yeah. 18 in Arcor? Yeah, yeah, like a like a condo building. So like GTA 5, how you could... Kind of, well, uh, on a more complex level. Obviously, because there'd be... It, it, what, that would be like the whatever house for the entire universe. It's not like multiple people could, you'd have to do security on it. There'd have to be a whack of gameplay there. Hmm. I don't know. Let's worry about getting the game out first. <laughs> yeah. And worry about well, yeah. Pets, oh, I mean, well, but that's, that's what this section of the, the podcast is for. Yeah. Uh, Catafor also asked, do you think there will be an active camouflage like that of an octopus who can change color to match their environment? Now we know we we do have the electro skin hull, which is going to let you change in between two. So that's sort of similar to that. But in terms of like active, like as an an animated camouflage, I don't. I think that would be so resource intensive. Anything we don't that, want that sort of thing either. I don't think anything in the game like that would have to have an opposite, like a neutralizing thing. Dude, Most imagine games have that. Imagine I had a brain power one that just flashed all the different colors. Yeah, and, it and just then, like it was, it's like uh, what is it called? It's called dazzle camouflage, right? Where it's like uh, it's normally the black and white stripes that are all crazy, but it's it's to confuse 
like for the shape and stuff. But it'd be like your dazzle camouflage of just like flashing bright colors of this fleet, and you don't know what it is, and you can't tell yeah, anything because they're all like it would come with oh, sunglasses you know, and a helmet yeah. thing. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to see any optic camouflage in the game at all. I don't want to see that kind of stealth tech. I, I think I think we want to do signal and emission management, and stealth is personal management of stealth. Well, I mean, I think that matching your ship sk- color to a planet yeah, that's or cool. to an asteroid or to space yeah. or whatever is fine. I like no that pre- idea. No but, predator suit. But no, yeah, yeah no, no predator, yeah, no predator suit, suit and no... Um, no animated things. And our mm. last question from Feral Wolven says, What is happening to cruise speeds in the new model? How will I explore belts if they limit my speed to the new SCM? Uh, do I have to hold boost to cruise? What about using snub fighters to explore? They need cruise. Well, they don't need cruise as it's implemented right now. And I guess we didn't really talk about this, but we can talk about it now. Is essentially you hit it on the head. Boost now, you will you will hold boost and it will bring you up to cruise speed, and that will accelerate you from whatever speed you're at all the way up to cruise and anywhere in between. Um, so there's two points to that though. Once you get there, do you have to hold it down to maintain? They don't. Or, that's unknown at this point. Right. And then the other one was, could you decouple and maintain velocity, right? And then preserve your thing. And again, it's unknown. But these are the two. Right. So, uh, so yeah. as it is, as it is in the game, that the way that Twerk played it is, you had to hold yep. it down. Yeah. But there was a lot of feedback from when they were there in in LA saying, once you're there, you should be able to let go and put that in, uh, and Moment, and then momentum. be able to and then be able to continue that speed, right? Because it doesn't yep. make sense. You don't have thrusters that are firing the opposite way right. when you Dude, let go on. off that boost. Uh, I I just want some form of cruise and boost management, which enables people that are good at boost management and with certain yeah. ships to be able to catch up with other ships in when they're fighting them. So you can't just constantly cruise away. That's important to me, mm-hmm. the gameplay mechanics. So well, I, I think once you see that, that those interdiction, interdiction mechanics come in, I, that, I and that's like saying, that's, but, but that's like saying there's a car that speeds away every time. I want to be able to have the magic catch-up speed. to catch that, And that's just not how that works. No, no. I want, if that person is bad at boost management, and I'm good at boost management, because that's the idea. It's right, but if he just more. but the thing is if he just goes to max, then he just goes to max. What I think it should be is there should be mm-hmm. a a good amount of boost management, for example, you don't want to go from because right now it uses the shift key, right? There's no yeah. in, there's no it's white or black. It's like on mm-hmm. or off. There's no stopping in the middle or anything like that. Oh, and especially for racing. That, especially no, no, for racing, saying... there should now this mechanic isn't in and it's not finalized yet. So, I just want to make it very clear that it would be nice to have that that granularity with it and being able to to yeah. to yeah. use it almost like it's a, a, a separate throttle. But can you not go to fifty percent throttle and boost, and then you would only get that speed? So while you're holding down boost, you go to eighty percent <laughs> throttle. Then you would get eighty percent of the cruise. But you there, you can't do that with a keyboard. Ah, get a right? different keyboard. That's not how keyboards work. I know. Oh, they right? will. So, they're, so they're... Th- think of how they do oh, the, the throttle. Keyboards. Right, right. Yeah. Well, think about how the the mm. throttle works mm. now, right? With, uh, with keyboard, you know, mm. you hold W for the throttle to go up, and that's what it is. It's not your speed. So, yeah. hopefully, they implement something like that for boost as well. Yeah, and that's needed. Like, I I want everyone to whatever controller they have to be happy and not feel like they're missing out. Yeah, that that is important. That is an important yeah. thing. That you don't go, well, I, I'm better because I've got a hotas or something like that. That's, yeah. That's, uh... But I'm I'm very right. interested. We didn't talk about this very much. I don't think I I originally was super upset about the speed changes when I first saw that Reddit post. I'm like, oh my god, they've broken the game, right? Obviously, and I get it. They're the dev- developers are doing it for a purpose. Whatever that is, that's not. We're not going to debate that today. After seeing it work on the live stream i was more okay with the idea and i i understand you know like it, it it was okay but i still need to play it for myself and uh i really can't wait for 2.6 to drop so i can make content on it finally 
Thank you. Um, Each of these guys even use keyboards. <laughs> I just said in chat. Oh, shit. Oh, no, never. <laughs> Okay, uh, so that's it. I know that if anybody got any questions, they weren't put in. Um, the people who normally put those in are not here. So, and I don't know how to do it because it's not something. Are we going to end on time? Uh, we're going to be ending on time, yeah. So, uh, we will get to those questions next week. That being said... Uh, when, what are you up to this week, Board, and, uh, where can people find you? Um, I will be streaming on Sunday and Tuesday, like I normally do, um, and people seem to like it now when I've re actually am able to read the chat. So I'm going to be more interactive, you know, like how you talk to people, Soros? Mm -hmm. Like, you can read? <laughs> I, I can do that now, too! Um, uh, other than that, I'm just going to be getting loads more videos up about what we saw recently. At, uh, at the live stream. Um, obviously, we're going to have, uh, I think we're having an ATV and RTV this week. We've got the Q&As from the uh, Prowler. Um, there's quite a lot going on. So expect videos every day. Woo! It's going to be the best. I've also got a new laptop, um, which I probably will review at some point. Uh, I can't talk about that. Um, and yeah. You, you're, you were in for a, a YouTube-y Star citizen -y treat. Uh, you can find those, those, those special video treats at Board Gamer UK on the um, uh, YouTubes, on mm -hmm. the Twitches, on the Twitters, pretty much anything. Anything that has a, a at or a <laughs> www. And a, um, Board Gamer Pro, Board Gamer UK. Woo! Woo! And there's all what his links you? in chat right there. Nubifier, what are you up to this week? And where so can people find you? So Nubifier 1337, the Nubifier 1337 on YouTube. You can follow me on Twitch if you like. I'll be the best host ever because I don't actually make content. Uh, same thing, Facebook, uh, Twitch, or Twitter. Now, uh, next week, I'm looking at making a video. Again, I try to make no bullshit, but a different spin on something. So what I'm going to do is look at the Caterpillar from concept to what we just saw. And hopefully that's interesting adding a little bit of uh, time, you know, so people get an estimate of what, how long it takes to make something like that. Uh, I'm obviously going to continue to look at these ships. And once all four of the variants are out, I'm going to make a, a comparison, the variant versus the stock. And I, I know you can change guns, but trying to put an idea on if something is worth the 20 bucks premium. So uh, that's about it. Again, as things come to my brain, I jot them down and I work out a, a video. If any of you have a video idea that you're interested or a question that would require only an answer, please find me on Facebook. I will answer at two in the morning, maybe, if I'm really bored mm -hmm. or I'm, if I'm awake. But I'm yes, really bored. You're really <laughs> bored. So bored. But yes, and obviously, if you're not a subscriber, please go have a look at some of the stuff I'm doing. And if you like it, subscribe. There you go. That's it. And for me, I'll be playing some Star Citizen and uh, more Star Citizen. Star Citizen and a little bit of Call of Duty. Uh, and between now and then, I'm going to be streaming right after this. You can find me on twitch.tv slash WTFSaurus and on twitter.com slash WTFSaurus as well. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much a it. Shout out to Twerk. Um, yeah, shout out to Twerk. I hope he's having a fantastic turkey. Uh, turkey dinner yeah. and I bet he's playing some more star citizen at cig <laughs> mate that's what he means uh, when he says he's going for a turkey dinner he's going to turkey uh, he's going for turkey turkey Bastard. <laughs> this was fun thanks okay. i had a great time yeah. no worries and i will be back on nice um you, hopefully my capture card is working properly if it is um i'll be staying on and i will be giving away an avenger oh that's renegade sure just i know it's much. beautiful um, if for whatever reason it's not, I will delay that until tomorrow and I can get things fixed. But I will talk to you guys in five minutes, so stay put and we will see you guys soon. Bye, guys. I love you. It's <laughs>